everyone, I'm Keely and this is Voice of a Creative and today I'm here to give you a tour of my studio and sewing space. So this has been a requested video. I did do a studio tour last year when we kind of first moved into the house. I thought it'd be quite good to do an updated version now. Also, I haven't been doing much sewing this month so I haven't really got much sewing to talk about so far. Things have been very, very stressful at school in terms of just dealing with all the extra things we kind of have to do. And although I'm really enjoying being back at school and speaking to the kids, that's one of my favourite parts of the job, kind of teaching the kids and talking to them and showing them new techniques and everything. But it has been a lot of work this week. And also this week I found out that my kidneys actually have 65% function. So that was from the blood test that in preparation for my operation, which I am a bit upset about because that means now I need to uh, contact the doctor and go for further tests to kind of improve that or keep an eye on it as it were. Thank you so much for all your kind messages and for anybody that is subscribed and to all my returning subscribers as well. I had a lot of comments on the last video and it really meant a lot to me, the care that you were showing and the kind words that you were giving as well. And also the stories that people shared of having the same operation, that was really comforting to me as well. So, a studio tour. I thought I would kind of show you the space and in some of the drawers and things like that. So I am really lucky. Uh, I live in a three bedroomed house. One of the bedrooms is the bedroom that we sleep in, which is a double bedroom. Then this small box room is my husband's office. He works from home. And the second big double bedroom I use for my studio office sewing space. So it is a double bedroom, it is a massive space and because this, is, because this is the house I lived in as a child that I bought from my mum, this is actually the bedroom that I had for my basically my whole life. So although we've painted it and decorated it, it's still the same room and so when I'm in here it kind of sends me back to that which I really love as well. I'm going to change the camera and I will show you around. So this is the door to my sewing space and studio. So it's got my name on the door, but that's left over from when I was a child. But I actually love having my name on the door, so pleased with that. They used to be clowns, but they've been painted over since, so it just says Keely now. So the view into the door, really lovely space, and I will just move the camera and show you the next bit. So this is what you see when you first walk in. I've got a chair here, that's the chair that I use to film on because it's a lower back rather than the kind of office chair. And this wall eventually will have a mural on it. I'm going to paint shapes and flowers and things like that. And I can use that as a backdrop for photos then. So this chair I bought from Argos a while ago, but I've covered it in some brushed cotton fabric. So really like that. And then I've got my William Morris cushion there as well. So then this is my desk. So I bought both of these from Ikea. So this one is uh, 1.5 by I think it's uh, three quarters of a meter so normally this is where I would cut out fabric if I'm cutting upstairs I normally cut out on the dining room table downstairs but uh, this is where I cut and then I've got my cutting mats on here at the moment because they need to stay flat they used to live under the sofa but I've had to move them because they won't fit there anymore. There's a leg in the middle of the new sofa, so they won't fit there. So they're on the table for now, but that's fine with me. You know, it's a good uh, cover for the table as well. And then the other desk, which is this one, is two metres long, uh, but it's a little less wide. I think it's 60 centimetres wide, and that covers the whole kind of corner of the space. Now, the reason I've got such a big desk, partially, is because if I'm doing printmaking or painting or anything like that, I do actually need the space for kind of a drying space. So I am looking into getting a drying rack for that kind of thing, but that's what I do, I spread everything around. So let's look a little closer at the desk. So I've got my office chair there. Um, I needed this during lockdown to sit properly and I've put a blanket on it because it just wasn't very comfortable. So I'm just gonna pop that out of the way a minute so we can see the desk. Then on the desk, I've got my sewing machine. So, that is my Janome Atelier 6, which is my new machine that I got. And I've added a Pink Coat Club sticker on there. So there's my machine. And I'm in the middle of sewing some masks 
but I've got my little tray on there that my mum got me with some cats on and I put pins and stuff in there. Then as we move along, I've got my Cricut Maker just there. So I, some people have asked me to do some tutorial videos with that, so I will try to kind of plan those in. So I made this cover for it out of this beautiful Liberty cotton and it's just under there, so it's just a dust cover. And then behind there, I've got a basket and in the basket it's just fabrics that I haven't put on Trello yet. So I log all of my fabrics on Trello and these are ones that are waiting to be put on there from my last fabric haul. Or sometimes I put makes in there as well. So moving along the desk, I've got a pot here with pens and this has got my Cricut tools in as well. That came from a Paper Gang subscription, so it's just a fold up one. And then the same with my Stay Cozy coaster. And then this is a little knitted pig that someone gave me and I just think it's really cute. It used to live at school, but I've bought it home because I don't want it to get um, any germs on it. Then we've got my overlocker here. So I'm just keeping some vinyl safe on top. But my overlocker, I've decorated it with some badges. So again, those are from Paper Gang, but this one's from Pink Coat Club, the Me Made one. And this again is an overlocker cover that I made to match. And then it just covers it up. So I have a Brother Lock 2104D. And again, I've accessorized with a Pink Coat Club sticker. And I just put it on this mat, which is like a quilted mat that my friend actually bought me because otherwise it vibrates on the table just because it's such a long table. Then last upon the desk, I've got a few things. So I've got this pencil sharpener pen pot as well. It's just got extra pens and things. My husband bought me that. And then I've got my owl vase that my friend bought me. And this is the bouquet from that friend's wedding, which goes perfectly in here. And it's lovely to have some flowers all the time. Then I've got two notebooks. This one I absolutely love is Pink Coat Club. So on there is a list of my work in progresses. And then when I complete them, I highlight them off. And then just another notebook just in case I need it for anything. So that's the kind of surface of the desk. And just because we're here on the wall behind, I have got some pieces of art there. These are from my degree mostly. So this one, this one, and this one are all screen prints. So I did those in university. My focus was a lot on clothing and identity and what we wear and things. And so that's the prints that I made for that. And then I've got two pencil drawings. This one's me and Bramble, my cat. And then this is a drawing of a me made dress with one of my vintage scarves. So really lovely addition to the wall. I love those. I am looking into actually starting to sell some of my work, but it's going to take a little while to get that sorted, get the packaging and test things out. But I will let you know when that's available because hopefully I will be able to um, set up prints of some of these. And that, because I think that that would be really great. I really love this uh, piece. It was a photograph and then I developed it into the, a four layer screen print as well. So onto the desk drawers. So a few different things in here. So in this top drawer is where I keep all of my sewing bits and pieces. So I've got a little box here with all of the smaller bits. I've got my pattern weights at the back and sewing notebook and then my scissors, pins, and then this really cute little tin with, well, I think it's bramble on there. That's my clips in there. So that's all of the kind of everyday sewing items. And then I've got like a basic stationery drawer. So there's highlighters and scissors and scrap paper and post-it notes, things that I might need every day. So then I've got this drawer. So this is where I keep my printmaking supplies and glues and other bits and pieces. So everything's organized into boxes. So I've got my rollers and glue and glue guns. And then this is all kind of tags and labels and different things. And then I've got different scissors in the box at the back. The next drawer down, we've got tape. This is a whole box full of washi tape and this is uh, printing supplies. So little stamp pads and stamps. Then in the bottom drawer, we've got everyday art supplies. So I've got my Faber-Castell watercolour pencils and colouring pencils. These are my favourite watercolours, Windsor and Newton, and brushes and bits and pieces in there as well. Then if we go to the other side of the drawers, so this is just an everyday drawer. So I've got a few things 
of artworks that I've been kind of working on in the top and then magazines and bits and pieces in there. So that's like stuff I'm kind of working on. Then we've got all pens and pencils in here. And then I took this out of a toolbox to just pop on the top. So I've got that in top with like more everyday pencils that I use and my headphones if in case I need them for like calls. Then this is a drawer of paper. So it's a whole drawer full of paper. So the printer paper and then colored paper as well. This is a drawer of uh, blanks for making cards. So this is kind of card making. And then the bottom drawer, I mean, there is some newspaper in there, but that is all card in there as well. So let's take a look under the desk next. So you wouldn't normally see this under the desk. That's why it's hidden under there. So in the top section, I've got art supplies. So things that don't fit anywhere else. So larger things for printmaking. And then I've got my old sewing machine is this one here with its cover. And then behind that is fabrics that won't fit in the other fabric storage, which are things that I don't use every day. And I've got my A2 sketchbook. And this is just a whole mess of wires because like how many things I've got plugged in. <laughs> this box is my work in progress box. So I've managed to get it down to just fit in this one box, which I'm really pleased with and I'm gonna do a separate video about what's in that box. And I just store on top, I've just got the project pouches. So when I start a new project, I put something in there. But I do wanna to get to a point where I am just making one project at a time, but you know, we'll get there. So that's the whole of the desk. Now by the side of the desk here, we've got this basket. Now this is where I put fabric scraps. There's not much in there at the moment, so I've just cleared it out. And then I've got my owl cushion just hanging about in there. And then the blanket is for the cats. So just moving around, I've then got my mannequin. Now at the moment, I've got my bobby pinafore on there, which I stopped making because it was not winter, but I'm gonna start again now. So that's kind of what I'm working on. I just hang things on there. I do sometimes use it for fitting, but not that kind of often. And then this storage is over the boiler. So we had this built for us. I need to paint it still, but we just keep all of our sheets and towels and stuff in there, which I've tried to keep nice and neat. So it just looks like fabric, but I'm gonna paint it white or blue to kind of match the room. Then we've got this shelf. So this shelf is the one sewing shelf. So I've got my sewing books over there. I haven't got that many. So I've got Breaking the Pattern and then Tilly Stretch and Tilly Make It Simple and then the Palmer Pletch Fitting Guide over there. And then I've got my thread storage box. So all of my threads are packed away in that box. It's not the greatest design because not that many fit and you can't see the colours from the top. Then I've got my Taylor's Ham that I made. So I used the pattern on the Tilly and the Buttons website and then the Taylor sausage as well. And then there's some other threads and bits and pieces in here. And then I've got my overlocker threads all stored there, which is fine for now, but obviously when I get more colors, I might need a little bit more space for that. Just on the edge here, I've got my seamstress Christmas decoration and my plushine on a pizza. <laughs> so we're over in this area now, which I've just shut the curtain so we don't have like massive glare from the window. And this is where my printer and other bits and pieces are. So I will just take you through everything. Okay, so first up we've got my printer there. And then on top, this is scraps of paper for collage. This is scraps of card. And these are the recent prints I did as part of a print workshop. And if you've looked on my Instagram, they're on there. Then I've got this squidgy cat, which I got as part of a Christmas Secret Santa, which is quite cute. There's a lamp. And then behind here in this gap is where I keep my lights for filming. And that's where I keep my tripod as well. So they just kind of stash away there. Then in this magazine storage rack is patterns and things I haven't touched yet. So I've got some plastic wallets which aren't cut out yet. And then these ones here are just printed from net printer and I haven't cut them out or anything yet. So they're just in there until I get a chance. That's the sketchbook that I'm working on at the moment and some copies of Vogue, which are good for like drawing inspiration and art. Then here I subscribe to scroll the scroller box. 
and these are boxes that have just come through that I haven't packed away so I like to look at it properly then pack it away and I just haven't had a look at those yet. So then into the drawers here. So I bought this big chest of drawers because I needed somewhere to put A3 things. So I've got lots of art things that are a bit larger. So in the top drawer here, I've got some other cutting mats, some different size cutting mats. And then this is where I keep all of the paper and sketch pads that I use for art. Then in the next drawer, we get a little bit messier as we go down, is anything for jelly printing. So jelly printing is really fun actually. Um, so it's a form of mono printing where you put ink and paint onto a plate and then you make lots of prints. And this is all stuff for that. And then I've got my Cricut drawer. So I've got my iron on vinyls and my mats really well organized in this drawer, but they're all in there. And next up, so the next three drawers are full of paper, basically. So this has like patterned paper and bits of other bits and pieces for jelly printing, wallpaper, like scraps of various things to use for collage. And the same here as well. And then the last one, again, it's bits of paper organized into folders, but I've also got my stickers in there. I've got an extra little one with Pink Coat Club stickers that I haven't used yet. So that's that one, really useful storage space, lots of stuff kind of fits in there. So next up the window, now these curtains are still too short, I haven't changed them, I need to change them, I really love them and I've still got two short curtains here but nobody sleeps in this room so it doesn't really matter. So we've got the window with my view out and next to the window, we've got my painting that my nan did me with fairies. And then I've got some artwork on the windowsill as well. So these are also screen prints I did of my cat. So we've got Bramble here and here, and I'll show you the ones the other side. Also hidden behind here is this really creepy little doll I made. I made this when I was about like seven or eight, but I just kept it here. My niece keeps wanting to take it home, but it just stays there behind the, behind the frame. And then that's my garden out there. Then we've got my mini easel and I've got some prints that I kind of rotate on there. So I've got that one at the moment, which is Stay True. That's from the Paper Gang box. And then this is my favorite print which is Bramble in the Snow. Again, a screen print, really love that one. So this is the final bit of the room. So this is the room next to the door. And this is a five by five Kallax unit that was very, very difficult to build, but this fits all of my fabric and other bits and pieces in it. So we've got this Poang chair here. So that's where my husband sits if he comes up into the sewing room and this is a cushion cover that my nan actually knitted so that's on that chair there so i'm just going to move the chair out of the way so you can see kind of what's behind as it were on top of the calyx unit we've got a few things so the toolbox is full of acrylic paint and above it is all my screen printing equipment we've then got a stack of collage cardboard so it's pieces of cardboard that i can work and make art on then a puppet cat that I made. So this is all of my PDF patterns and then my rulers as well. They are looking a bit messy and they've just got their post-it notes on because I need to put some proper labels on there really, but they're all organized into folders and by pattern company, not the neatest storage, but that's because I can't quite reach. And so yeah, that's what happens. And then we're on to the actual boxes. These are scraps that are large enough to do things with, but so they're just all kind of organized in there. So they're just awaiting me to make something from them really. And the same in this one and this one. So that is three boxes at the top there of basically fabric scraps that I need to do something with. Then the last two boxes, so this one is full of cotton fabrics. So not dressmaking cottons, but cottons for quilting, mask making and things like that. 
and then this box has got my paper patterns in it so not very well organized really they're just all kind of stacked in there this is the nest skirt that i was making recently so they're just all kind of stacked up in there i don't use them as often but i do like to keep them all nice and kind of stacked away then on the next row we have fabric so this is the start of all of my fabrics so this does mean I have got 15 boxes of fabric basically here, but they aren't all full. <laughs> so this first box is where all of my cottons are stored. So these are dressmaking cottons. So I just roll them up and then they're just stored upright into the boxes, which I'll show you in more detail when I get to the bottom boxes. This is filled with viscose twills. So this box it's all viscose twills. That one is quite full actually because I love viscose twill. And then this one here is just viscose. So that one hasn't got so many in it, but it is still quite heavy. This box here has heavier weight ones. So this is where my cords, denims, canvases are. So I don't have loads of those. So that's why they're just in here. This box is a box of fabrics that I'm either de-stashing or are for other people. So fabrics for other people to make things for them. Then we've got the drawers. So these first few drawers are art supplies. So organized by type. These last four drawers are sewing supplies. So I don't necessarily need as much space for those. Although these drawers are jam packed. So the first drawer is this one, which is really packed and unorganized. This is elastic and bias binding and cotton tape basically. So this is a whole mix of stuff, which is not very organized. I have got my uh, tools to make bias binding as well in there. And yeah, that's all just kind of packed into there. I did try to organize it, but it just stayed messy. So, you know, and then in here is where I've got my filming supplies. So I count them as sewing supplies because I film for sewing videos, obviously. And then in the last two drawers, this top one is like fastenings. So I've got all my buttons in there and this bag has zips. So this is full of buttons. And then I've got my tiny little jars, which are spice jars. Uh, that I'm reusing to just put labels in. So the, that's a really cute one from Pink Coat Club. This took ages. And I've just used this little one to store my recent labels that I bought from Paige Joanna. So lovely. So just a whole mix, some more labels in there that contains pet hair ones. And that's my labels in that one. And then this one I've got myself drafted. And then other bits and pieces so that's kind of buttons and things so some are random um i don't know if it's the best storage but it kind of works i kind of probably need to divide the drawer up a little bit then this last one is a mix of stuff so i've got my interfacing in there I've got a little box with extra needles and then this is just a tub of random stuff that i don't really know what to do with per se so i've got some packets of labels in there and like just fry, I just put things in there. So I've got ribbon, I've got my buckles for dungarees, I've got velcro tape, and just like just random stuff basically that I can't find anywhere else to put. So I've just put that all in there. So those are all the drawers. So now we're on to the knit fabric. So I'm just gonna adjust the camera to show you. So this is the bottom section so let's start over here so this first box is sweatshirting and knit fabrics so i've got this beautiful one that i got from japan which is just a denim knit but it's all beautifully colored on the inside and yeah just a whole mix of french terries in there as well and then underneath we've got more sweatshirtings so these are both heavyweight sweatshirtings ready for jogging trousers ready for jumpers kind of more winter warm fabrics the next one along so we've got this one this is all like knit fabrics for cardigans so i've got like rib knits like this i've got just little bits and pieces just some really soft knits for cardigans and this lovely wicker knit mind the maker one so those are literally is a box of fabrics dedicated to making cardigans i haven't got to yet again we've got some ribbing some cuffing basically 
and they're more knit fabrics and French terries and sweatshirtings. So all nice cozy fabrics in the first four. Then in this one, we have got viscose jerseys to make beautiful dresses and some drapey t-shirts. And then we've got some heavier weight ponties and kind of scuba type fabrics. And these last four, again, are jerseys. So at the bottom here, we've got more viscose jersey. Really love viscose jersey. So we've got a whole selection there as well, ready to be sewn up. And then this one here is plains. So these are all different ones, but plain jerseys and tensils and viscose jerseys. So they're all just mixed, but these are all plain ones of them as well. I mean, that is chock-a-block, but I do need to make some plain t-shirts. So that's why it's like that. And then in this one here, these two are my cotton jerseys. So we've got cotton jerseys in here, this new fishing cat one I got, and some animal print and my embroidered one. So they're just all stored in there. Again, that is really packed. I need to make some stuff from there. And then the last one, again, more cotton jerseys. So these are ones that I have enough for dresses mostly. So are waiting for me to just sew them into dresses as well so lots and lots of fabrics <laughs> so last of all we're back at the door and on the back of my door i've got all of these things on the notice board these are photos and notes but also sewing postcards and other things that i think were just cute so that's all stored just there. The last thing I wanted to say is I did tidy round before I showed you the studio. So it is not always this tidy, but I do clean up after every project and stack things away. But because I do things during the week and then just stack them on the desk, normally the desk by the end of the week is like piled high with stuff. So I did tidy it last night before I filmed this. So that's just a little disclaimer. My sewing space and studio space is not always this tidy. It's usually, a bit more messy than this although I do have storage spaces for everything but just just in case you were thinking oh my god how do you keep it so clean I don't it's just I cleaned it for this video okay <laughs> I hope you enjoyed looking around my studio and sewing space thank you so much for watching if you liked the video please press the thumbs up and subscribe if you want to hear more from me goodbye